This episode of A Conversation with John Conenna is sponsored by Generate. In today's digital age, staying ahead means harnessing the power of generative AI. Wondering how your small or medium-sized business can join this revolution? Look no further than Generate, your strategic partner for integrating cutting-edge generative AI solutions. We create personalized plans, adapting existing AI technologies to fit your specific business needs. Plus, our expert team provides essential training, empowering you to make the most of these innovative technologies. Interested in transforming your business with AI? Reach out to us at generateteam at gmail.com. That's generate, G-E-N-E-R-A-I-T, team at gmail.com. And now, on with the episode. Good afternoon and welcome to another edition of A Conversation with John Canetta. Today, we go down a different path, a path that's going to be very interesting for me and our viewers today. Uh, about a couple of weeks back, I met a very vibrant young lady, very motivated young lady. Her name is Elizabeth Grisanzio, and she is the CEO and president of EG Strategies. Uh, her political uh, expertise and relationships span over 10 years and um, want to hear from this young lady of how this all got started for her, her education with this, and uh, what is going on with her. So, Elizabeth, uh, to bring you in, what is going on with you, young lady, these days, before we go back a little bit in time to see how this all gets going? Sure. Well, thank you, John. I want to first thank you for having me on your show. Um, and, you know, the, the world of politics is uh, very um, different. I guess the pathway to get to where I'm at um, is a lot different than what one would assume, right? So I got my start at the University of Illinois, Chicago. I was an undergrad major in political science. I wanted to go to law school and I was really considering it. I took the LSAT, um, applied for law school, did an internship at a law firm, decided law is not for me. So instead, I um, I navigated my network and talked to a few other lobbyists who have mentored me along the way. And they were like, Liz, you know what? If this is what you want to do, um, get involved politically within the city of Chicago. So that's what I did. I worked on various campaigns, uh, mayoral races, state representative races, uh, county board chairman races. Wow. Um, and, you know, really uh, created a network for myself um, to, you know, just to kind of see and explore the different avenues that I could take in order to achieve my goal. Um, and as you know, I'm a first generation Italian American. Both of my yes. parents immigrated here. Mom was 13 and my father was nine. Um, and, you know, work ethic and education was always a priority in our household. Um, you know, they, they wanted a good life for me. Um, and of course, you know, the old, um, you know, mentality is you're either a doctor, a lawyer, or an engineer. And so when I told them I wasn't going to law school, uh, you know, there was some disappointment, but I, I, um, I, you know, took the path that I wanted to take and I forged ahead and I it was successful finally in what I'm doing. So after undergraduate, uh, my undergraduate studies at the University of Illinois, Chicago, I went to DePaul University and got my graduate degree. Great school, great school. Yeah, yeah love DePaul, go demons. Go um, demons. And from there, I worked on Mayor Rahm Emanuel uh, runoff campaign. Um, I was in charge of organizing over 600 volunteers every single week for about six weeks until the runoff was over. It was a very cumbersome um, task, but I, I excelled at it. Um, and then from there, I went to work in government. Um, I worked in the diversity programs department within the Chicago Transit Authority. Um, and what the diversity programs department was in charge of working closely with procurement. So I learned how to navigate procurement laws and understand 
how bidding for contracts at the city level works. Um, yeah. And then, you know, I from there, I worked in a lobbying and consulting firm. And then from there, I uh, worked for a nonprofit. And then I worked for a for-profit company. So I've worked in all sectors of all sectors that you can possibly work in and find yeah, no, I mean, I mean, I... even going back like you said, uh, the charity at Martha's, um, mm -hmm. manager partner relationships, the director of fundraising and operations for heart of DuPage, um, chief right. of staff, LW and CO. I mean, you have done it all. Let me go back to how you opened this up. Cause sure. I love the way you opened it up. Okay. Uh, just like my dad said, Oh my God, I want you to be a lawyer. You have the gift to gab. I go, dad, yes, I do. I have the gift to gab, but I'm just not smart up here to understand all these laws and everything else. So, you know, but I have to tell you what, when you knew, when did you know that you could do this, you know, being the lobbyist, correct? Am I using the right word? So when I, sure. So after I worked on Rahm Emanuel's campaign, I was able to work closely with someone who is very near and dear to my heart, who so happened to be Mayor Daly's deputy chief of staff for 14 years. He has very, he is, he has been um, instrumental in the path to my success. Um, and he has really guided me on this path. And he said, hey, okay, if this is what you want to do, you know, you don't have to be a lawyer to lobbyist. Um, you just need to work hard. You need to create a network for yourself. You need to maintain and nurture relationships. You need to get involved politically. You need to attend networking events. And you always have to carry yourself with the utmost professionalism. You have to, you know, prove to others that you can be trusted, that you are loyal. Um, and so all of that, you know, being said, those are the skills that you aren't taught in school, right? I am not devaluing an education by any means because education opens doors and it's very important, especially today. However, um, the relationships that you make while working are so important. Um, and if I could pay it forward and mentor somebody um, in this sector, I would tell them, look, like, yes, you have to be a good student, but you also have to have the skill set to talk to people, um, earn their trust, be accountable, um, and follow your path. So if, if you set out goals, you, you have to reach those goals in order to be successful in life. Um, and so that, that to me is, is more valuable than an education. Do you find that uh, people are always coming to you? I mean, now, of course, you know how we opened this up today with this, uh, uh, that you are now the CEO of the EG um, uh, Strategies. Yeah. And this is your company now. Right. So the I'll kind of get into that. So yeah, yeah, sure. is a lobbying and consulting firm. Um, I lobby on behalf of the state, city, and local municipalities. Um, I have a, a client right now. They're an IT client. Um, they're going after a lot of work um, at the state and at the city level. Um, and, you know, my relationships with both leadership at the state and at the city have proved valuable, right? Um, not only do I know the procurement laws and regulations and, you know, the rules that you need to follow once a bid or an RFP hits the street, um, that is kind of my specialty. So that is, those are the skills that I can then offer my client and say, look, like right now, you know, we can't talk to so-and-so because due to procurement law, if we talk to them, um, you know, that could procure us, uh, pre preclude us, sorry, excuse me, preclude us from, no. um, you know, bidding for this work. And, you know, these are the things that companies and corporations and organizations don't necessarily have knowledge in. Um, so that's where I come into play. And it makes it and, easy. And I am, right. And I am like the bridge between the client and the, the state, the client and the city, or the client and the local municipality. And so I, I really help them navigate those, those difficult and cumbersome paths. 
Elizabeth, I have to ask you, uh, dealing with that client, and now you sure. know you're the one giving that advice, and of course, how you should go into this. Um, is there a, the struggle between you and that client? Uh, you sure we want to do it this way? The, there, there's a lot of that word strategy is big, like we use it in sports. We have to be right. sure what we're going into with the plan, correct? Right. So that's where my relationships with my colleagues um, who are also in this sector um, and who work in this world and who have been very successful in this world for a very long time um, come into play. Right. So if I'm ever unsure of myself, I, I, I don't just pretend like I know what I'm doing. I do my research. I call a friend. I ask them for advice. I say, hey, look, you know, we're looking to do X, Y, and Z. Here's what I'm thinking. Is this correct? And based off of, you know, their experience and, you know, their um, history with this type of work, they then offered me advice. And, you know, I'm, I'm lucky to say that I have those people in my corner that I can rely on when I need to ask them for a question. Um, but with that being said, that goes back to forming your networks and maintaining and nurturing relationships because, you know, one can say that they're lucky, but you're, a person isn't just successful because they're lucky. They're successful because they put themselves, put themselves in situations to succeed, right? right. And it's work. It's every single day. And and my job isn't, you know, your typical nine to five job. I mean, there there's times where, you know, there's a 911 fire drill and I am working until midnight or my client calls me at 1030 p.m. with um, an ask and, you know, I pick up the phone because that's what I do. And I don't say no to my clients. And um, and that's important too. You know, you, you have to be able to be relied upon. You know what? I thank you. Thank you for bringing it up that way. I have to tell you, um, you know, sometimes I paint a picture on social media that, oh, this family went to the Caribbean and everything went fine. But what you just said is so important. It's because I think people will say, wow, Elizabeth Grisanzio answered her phone or her email at 1030. What okay. is she going to do to fix this? I've had a family member tell me once, what are you doing answering your phone at 1030? Yeah. Look, that's oh, I get that all the time. Yeah, but that is fantastic the way you put it because now that client, tell me if I'm wrong, is going to remember Elizabeth Grisanzio down the road, correct? Yes, yeah, I'm... I'm available at all hours. I, you know, I get phone calls. I'm one that I'm very robotic and very much so routine based and structured um, where I have a very consistent schedule every single day when it comes to working out, waking up early, you know, eat, having time to eat my breakfast, you know, saving some time for myself. Um, but I'll be in the middle of a six mile run and my phone will ring, it'll be 6.30 a.m. and I pick it up, Right. you know? Um, and I think that once you develop relationships like that, where you are looked at and perceived as accountable and responsible, um, that's where further success comes into play. For sure, for sure. Question for you, because I admire anybody that's doing how you did this, meaning uh, 50 some odd years ago, almost 60 years ago, my dad opens up this travel agency and I, he scratched my head sometimes and I say, wow, how did he do this? This man with, you know, uh, who had an education here in America, he, you know, he came here young. But what made Elizabeth Grisanzio say, hey, you know what? I'm good and bad on the dance floor. I'm going to do this. What made you, because your experience that we went, we filtered off of here earlier today uh, in this interview, what made you decide? What was that point? I mean, was, was there sure. something that said, okay, I'm going to do this. You know, I'm going to be, sure. I'm going to be GG So after being the director of fundraising and operations for um, a countywide race back in 2022, um, I, I learned a lot. I was responsible for overseeing a $2.3 million budget. 
I was in charge of, you know, the candidates day to day operations. Um, I was in charge of staff. And in, in addition to all of that, I was I was responsible for, uh, you know, doing all of our reporting on the state board of elections. I was the treasurer. Um, and that really kind of put me on a trajectory to meet a ton of people in the elected space, um, state legislature, uh, county board commissioners, city officials. Um, and so from then, from, from there, I was hired on at a, a private sector company. And, you know, I was promised X, Y, and Z and, you know, some things that some unfortunate circumstances happened and I, um, my capacity was underestimated, um, as a woman in this space, you know, and I'm, I, by no means am I saying that I need any extra attention because I am a woman. I'm not that way by Got it. any stretch. Of the I work harder. I make sure I'm more professional. I make sure I'm ahead of everybody else because that's how my mother raised me. She raised me to always be 10 steps ahead, to be educated and, you know, to work hard. So um, being a woman in a male dominated field uh, is, is difficult, um, but you throw a challenge my way. I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to tear down the door. I'm not going to knock, you know, I'm, I'm just going to walk right through it. And so um after that situation occurred to me, I said, you know what, I, I'm lucky. I, you know, I, I rely on myself. I, I don't have any dependents. Right. I got this. I'm fine. You know, this person underestimated my capacity and I, I'm going to show them what, you know, value they're, they're losing right now. It was so, your motivating factor. It was your motivating that was, factor. That was the catalyst that broke the camel's back. And, um, so I took the summer off last summer. I traveled to Italy. I went to Greece. I, I lived my life thoroughly to expectations that I didn't think I could live and came back in September. And I said, all right, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to launch this. I'm going to start my company. I filed my paperwork and I, I got a client right off the bat and we've been, you know, very lucky. Uh, we've, We've done a lot in the past year and I, you know, I very successful at, at this point in the game when it comes to looking at what I've done in the course of the year after starting my business. So it's something that I've always wanted to do. And I think that, you know, unnecessary, unfortunate circumstances may have pushed me um, to excel and to reach the goal that I didn't didn't think I was going to reach until I was 40 or 45. No, so but, yeah, what you're very young and what a great time to start this. And so you've only been at this at, since 23, but of course the beauty here is the well, experience. independently. Yes. Yeah. 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 The experience of all these places that you've been to, and I'm sure you're well recommended, you know, for a lot of things. Like I am. Yeah, I am. And that's another very important factor that you bring up in this field of work. You know, I, I've, my client is a, a global entity. So they, they, they do work here in Illinois. They also do work all over the country as well as internationally. Um, so they're a very well-known company. Um, I can't get into their name or the details, but Understandable. Um, just because they a non-disclosure agreement, but, sure. um, you know, it's, there's something to be said about that for them to bring me on as a rookie lobbyist, um, says a lot because I am perceived as someone who is a hard worker, who has relationships, who's able sure. to get things done. Um, and is a hard, I'm a hard charger. So, you know, you give me a task and I, I get it done. I don't let it pile up on my desk. I, you know, I, I get these action items off because there's always another action item behind that action item. For sure. I have to ask you because, um, you know, the political landscape in Illinois is very complicated. It's, if anybody knows, it's you. Okay, it's it's you. Yeah. So you have to be prepared 
for the client and what he's looking for, correct? I mean, you're you're doing homework at both ends. Right, right. Um, and unfortunately, you know, it, it, it's tough, right? Because as a lobbyist, you have to advocate on behalf of your client and their best interest is, is at hand at all times, right? So sure. if that means supporting X candidate over Y candidate, um, during a certain time of the year, if it's an election year, if it's not an election year, you have to be very strategic, right? Because, sure. um, you know, you want to be able to work both sides of the aisle in order to get what you need done for your client. So you have to have relationships on both sides. It's very important to be bipartisan, especially in this space. Sure, without a doubt. Okay, and a question for you. Um, with the, the procurement, you find that, the, I mean, the, it's, is it always, it's definitely always different, correct? Sure. So procurement's very, very um, complicated, right? Yeah. So with certain, any government contracts um, that are put out for bid have specific um, details and qualifications, right? So for example, if you're an engineer and you're bidding for work at the city level, you know, there's specific paperwork that you need to include in your application. There's specific diversity, small business enterprise, minority owned business uh, requirements that you have to fulfill. Um, of course, then you submit it to the city or the state agency with whatever, you know, agency or level of government you're working with. Um, and lowest bidder and, you know, the, the, the bidder that has, uh, you know, the best uh, minority re requirements fulfilled um, sure. is awarded the contract. But with that being said, there's a lot of regulation on what you can and cannot do during the time frame that the bid is open. Exactly. Okay. Okay. How long do you think from, no, how long do you think from start to, what, what's the average in your mind? Have you noticed this now since you started this in the average, you mind, how long does it take with each client? I mean, this could take how long? I mean, uh, you know, hour well, I mean, so here's, here's an example, right? So yeah. the state could put out an RP in July and say it's due September 1st. All right. So, you know, your client is like working diligently to gather all of their paperwork and the necessary items and get their subcontractor lined up so that they fulfill the, you know, minority requirements. And then the state comes back and says, all right, well, we're going to extend this out instead of being due in September. Now we're going to push it out to November. And then, so then you submit it, you know, you resubmit in November and you know, it takes a couple of weeks for everybody to kind of go through your application and to look at all of the other applications and determine if all of those boxes are checked to determine who the actual awardee is for the contract. Um, and then, you know, if you're awarded the contract, you have a 14-day grace period where somebody could protest that contract. So then say somebody protests the contract then, you know, they cancel the contract. So then if you were awarded the contract, then somebody protested you, the contract is revoked. And then sometimes the bid is canceled. And then sometimes the bid is canceled and rebid. So, I mean, this, it doesn't, you can't really put a time frame on an individual contract. It They're all be, different, right? They're, They're all, all different. And you're working with several different agencies. You're working with different leadership individuals within those agencies um so it gets it gets complicated you know and if you don't have and if you don't have the relationships to um kind of i don't want to say dig or find out information because that's not the right word but if you don't have the relationships to know who to call to ask the right questions as to the status of your application you're just a number, you know, you're just a piece of paper on somebody's desk, you know, who's working day in and day out as a bureaucrat, and you're not going to get anything done. 
You know, you're not going to have um, any answer that you can. You're spinning. Yeah, you'd be spinning in mud. Yeah, you're spinning right. your wheels. You're you're like a hamster <laughs> on a wheel. Yeah, yeah the right? wheel, right? Exactly. So, oh, so that's a where I could. I have to tell you, just listening to these last two minutes of you explaining this, because I was saying to myself as we were going along, wow, how, how much time does she spend? Really, in essence, you are the lawyer for the client. Because, well, I'm not the lawyer. But I'm I don't saying, have a lawyer, but yeah, you know, the, the lawyer, the when time, he has to hear about lawyers, a, a case or something, yeah. has to, it could right. be continued or it could be pushed back. And you are using the same terms and terminology. And I'm sure, you know, now you got to go back to that client and everything else. Uh, right. just, just amazing that, you know, here we were talking about, hey, I wanted to become maybe a lawyer, but really in essence, you are the lawyer for the client. Well, and I'm helping the legislator make the laws. Right. 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 I'm advocating on behalf of my client for that legislation to either get pushed or, you know, to be amended or whatever it may be. So I get the best of both worlds. I don't have to go to school for all of those years. Right, right, okay. To, right. You know, do all of that, but I still have the ability to make an impact. And um, that brings me to, to another thing. Um, having the ability to pick and choose who I work with and who I support and advocate for as a business owner, um, to me is the best part about my job. I don't have somebody on my back saying, all right, you need to do X, Y, and Z for this person. Because sometimes you don't always believe in what X, Y, and Z is doing. And you don't want to be involved with what sure. they're doing. Um, so it's it's it really given me the freedom to pick and choose who I support and who I work for and advocate for and spend all of the hours that I do researching and, and working for that person. So and I feel lucky in that. Department. It's Elizabeth Grisanzio's show. This is her. This is yeah, her. It's the, Elizabeth, it's the Liz show. Yeah. It's the Liz show. <laughs> <laughs> no, but I mean, yeah. you, hey, you're going to either make it, like my father used to tell me, either you're going to make it or you're going to break this place. It's up hey, to you. Hey, sink or swim. Right, exactly. And that is fantastic. Right. But, but I mean, I have to tell you, Elizabeth, just in the short time here that we're talking, the work ethic has come out about you. I mean, you have a great work ethic because you keep saying that same thing. Hey, I'm not going to let these papers pile up on me. You know, I'm going to go after it. You you have a great reputation. And of course, all this networking you did before you opened up the this company has been fantastic. I have to ask you, okay, you've had all this years of experience. Last question before we play a game of five questions. How, how do you feel after one year of now being here on your, you, you feel good? You got that good feel where you said? I feel, I feel great. I really do. I feel great about where I'm at. I'm, I'm happy to see that, you know, people have really entrusted me and, you know, invested. I mean, this, the company is that I represent has invested a lot of money into my services. And sure. there's something to be said about that. You know, a multi-million dollar company isn't going to bring somebody on that doesn't know what they're doing. So no, absolutely. some days right. where I feel like I'm spinning in circles like a top, but I must right. come off and be, hey. I'm perceived as someone who hey. is professional and able to get things done so yeah that's exactly all oh my god it's it's just uh, amazing how you know you had that fortitude you had that outlook that you know you said you could do this and it truly truly shows in this some of these short things that you tell me and of course that political landscape and everything else that you have to go through in the procurement is huge it's huge it is it's it's a difficult process right without a doubt all right listen I know you. Uh, your time is valuable, and I wanna. I uh, wanna play just these. A thing of five questions. Some are gonna be a little serious. Some are gonna be a lot of fun. But you can answer them in one word, two words, or you can tell me, John. I'm not answering it. <laughs> no, no, no. All, all in good health. All right. I gotta ask you this first question. Um, who's that early mentor when it came to this type of work? whether it was your parents, whether it was someone in this that uh, knew you, 
who's that early mentor you think about still to this day and you say, wow, thank you for, I remember what he told me or what she told me, and now I put it to good use. Do you remember somebody like that? Sure. I have to say that's my mother. Um, you know, she has always worked very hard. She was an immigrant. She moved here when she was 13. She had to learn the language. She put herself through college. She went to nursing school. She opened up a business, ran a business for 14 years, went back to nursing school, became a nurse practitioner, supported three children, put us through private school. The woman is still working and she's never going to retire, but she has taught me an invaluable lesson in life that no matter what, you have to work hard and you have to rely on yourself and you have to be independent and stand on your own two feet. And education is power because it's something that nobody can ever take away from you. Um, so I got to give all credit to my mother there. Sure. Have there been people along the way who have guided me down this path? Absolutely. There's been several, but when it comes down to it, fundamentally, my mother has really drilled in that work ethic and I'm, I'm lucky to call her my mom. That is yeah. fantastic. Thank you for bringing that up because I had that Italian mom who never wound up speaking English, came to America. And I'll never forget the only thing she told me, she used to say to me, John, when you go work for your father, the only thing you really got to do is work hard under this tyrant of a husband that I have. But she said, just be nice to everybody. Say hello. That was the best piece of education. So when you bring up your mom, I got a little bit of water in my eyes that you can't see through my eye. Yeah. So she's, thank you for, so thank you for bringing up your mother. Reckon with, let me tell you. You got it. <laughs> All right. Let's see this answer because this is going to tell me a lot about you. No, not real, but okay. What's a movie when you want to unwind that you could watch over 200 times and not get bored? One or two. Okay, so I asked for Christmas when I was nine. I asked for the Godfather trilogy. So oh, okay. One and two were great. Three, not so much. But I could watch Godfather one and two over and over and over again, as well as my cousin Vinny. Vinny my oh, my cousin Vinny with the, the youths. The youths. Yeah, those are probably my three favorite movies. <laughs> Godfather <laughs> one and two and my cousin Vinny. Yeah, Elizabeth, we're always going back to that law thing with my cousin Vinny. <laughs> But exactly. um, favorite actor in um favorite actor in the Godfather trilogy. Um, I would have to say Santino. He, okay, James Gunn. Name. Yeah, he's Jamie the Gunn. best. I named my dog after him. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> okay. So, it's, it's, he's my it's, favorite. Okay. Mine was Marlon Brando because you know, Brando from the 50s was able to do that uh being right. an american indian and everybody thought he was italian but brando right. was being the original I, I feel like i also i also have santino's um uh temper so oh, great. yeah <laughs> thank, thank god this is over in five minutes <laughs> no 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 okay what's that go-to restaurant that you want to get all decked out in and if it's a man or you want to go out with your girlfriends or whatever, what's your one? I'll give you two because nowadays we got to watch what we say, but what's that favorite restaurant where you say you've had the great day at the EJ strategies. I want to go for dinner. What's your favorite restaurant? Sure. So, well, I have three, so I'm going to oh. tell you three. Okay. Uh, Pico Sonio is one of my favorite on Grand Avenue in the city. Yes. Um, I love their patio. It's spectacular. Okay. It's there. My second favorite is, of course, it's Gibson's. Like, who doesn't love a good steak? Of course, My over there on Rush it. or the one in Oak Brook. The one in Oak Brook is perfect. I love the one on Rush Street. Um, I guess I four. Bellevue is another favorite just because it's really bright, the old tavern on Rush. Okay. Um, and then if I were to pick a place in like Melrose Park, Elmwood Park, I have Donnie G's. I love the live music at Donny G's. Over here, right by my office. Yeah. Yeah, it's the best. Not too far. So those, well, those are my you favorites. know what? You've picked uh, four uh, good ones for sure. Yeah, you're, <laughs> you're spot on. So that's a good one. Okay. Since I'm doing, this is question four. Since I'm doing the interviewing today, I'm interviewing, you know, Elizabeth Grisancio. 
who's somebody somewhere down the road or even in your past could be a man could be a woman, whatever, that you would like to interview? I know your answer. I know you want to interview me, but who else would it be? Well, there's so many people, right? Um, I'll give you one or two again. Do I have to say names? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, it could be a, an actor. It could be a, your friend. I mean, yeah, if you don't mind. I mean, if you don't want to say Okay, that. so <laughs> I guess I would like to interview... Um, not to get political or anything, but if I had the opportunity to visit Mar-a-Lago and have a sit down with our past and hopefully future president, Donald Trump, um, I would be delighted to pick his brain on his, um, successes, on his failures, how he's overcome his failures. Um, I think that he is a man that shows what hard work and you know dedication to their businesses uh you know basically provides for future you know ventures i mean the guy has successfully opened closed thousands and thousands and thousands of dollars worth of real estate and yeah you know has been successful and runs and operates these businesses this is on a day-to-day -day basis and all of his properties are incredible. So I would really love the opportunity to sit down and talk to him one day. And hopefully that day is soon. I have to tell you, um, every time I look at him, let's say from even the days when he was the real estate guy in New York to when he was yeah. on a show called, I think, The Apprentice. The Apprentice. Yeah. yeah. When he would look at you straight in the eye and he would say, John, you're fired. You know, yeah. there's always this same demeanor to him. I would love to interview him too. But the thing is, I saw just now in those eyes of Elizabeth Grisazio, confidence in Johnny's eyes. I'm a little fearful in Donald. No, <laughs> you know, oh, it's it's tough love, right? And right? you got, you, you, in order to succeed, you have to fail. Exactly. So, exactly. Yeah, you can't get A pluses all the time and you can't no, be the winner no. all the time. You can't, you know, you, no, good point. Uh, Otherwise uh, you don't learn. Yeah, exactly. So. Good, good point. Okay. Last question. And then I got to say something about you before I let you go. Last question. What's in that future? Cause I think it's going to be bright for the president and CEO of this uh, EG strategies, Elizabeth Crisanzio. Where does she see herself five, 10 years from now? With this so I see myself um, having the ability to lobby at the state local and federal level. I would love to be able to to lobby um, D in DC someday. Um, so, you know, that obviously there's a lot of building blocks they have to do in order to get there. But, you know, like I said earlier, if I have something in my head, as long as I put my mind to it and follow the necessary steps to get there, I am confident within myself that I'll be able to accomplish those goals. That determination that you've shown throughout this whole interview. Okay. There's something I want to say about you. And I was looking basically for about, since I met you that day, about a week to 10 days when I was doing the research on you. I says, geez, I, I want to find something what Elizabeth's about in this short time that I've met her. And it stared me right in the face. And I got it. Um, we talk about strategies. We talk about the political landscape. We talk about procurement and everything. The slogan here is EG strategies will get the job done and lead you to success. But you know what? It's Elizabeth Grisanzio that, of course, is behind the EG strategies that's going to lead us to success. Elizabeth, you keep doing what you're doing. And this was a pleasure. And I really thank you for coming on a conversation with John Canetta. Well, thank you for having me, John. I really appreciate it. Anytime. Yeah. I'm happy to be on your show. I will definitely be calling you again. I would love to do a part two to see how this has gone. You have done a fantastic job. I mean, I could spend another hour with you just on all the things that you told me here in this short time. I want you to know that this will go out on um, a YouTube and on um, and on Spotify here in about two days or so. So we can uh, revisit this interview with Elizabeth Grisanzio. This was really nice, Elizabeth. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you for having me. You got it. Have a good day, everyone. And thank you. 
Thank you. Thank you. On sale now at Amazon.com and Barnes and Noble stores. The Twins, A Journey of a Lifetime. The brothers and authors, Tony and Carl Ruzica, take us through a journey of Chicago sports history and their memories of a bygone era. Purchase your copy today.